I'm here sitting, charging all my stuff outside of a hop out, and um, I figured I'd make this video about DMT, because, you know, why not? I have done DMT 15 times in my entire life, seven of which I've had desired results. All the other times, I would get, like, Smile tracers, mild head change, kind of equivalent to a mild mushroom trip. I would describe it. It's very close to mushrooms. I mean, psilocybin's biocidin and dimethyltryptamine, so, you know, or psilocin, I mean, so, you know, they're very, very close chemically. Um, but I would uh, say the desired effect, I can't really explain it in words, <laughs> but um, one time I remember I had the biggest effect was a. Uh, in Vermont, and I was at this little shindig sort of music festival gathering thing, it was just like uh, a bunch of bands, kind of like, you know, touring folk punk bands and DIY bands meeting out in this little park area for a few days, and they were camping out there, and I volunteered to clean up trash, but I do that at a lot of festivals, and um, this one weird dready kid, I don't even remember his friggin' name for the life of me, but anyways... Keith, that was his name. He um called me over while I was doing trash. Like, hey, you dude, doing trash? Come here. You want to smoke DMT? I'm like, yeah. So he pulled out this uh, amethyst crystal, which he used as a scooper for the DMT, and scooped it into a bubble pipe with a torch lighter. At first, when I saw it, you know, my mind went to you know other things like, no, I don't. Cause no, because <laughs> I grew up around, you know, tweakers and meth heads. I grew up in fucking Florida, so I know exactly what that shit is. And that's the first thing my brain went to. I'm like, no, nah, man, I'm good. I'm good. He's like, no, it's DMT. It's DMT. It's DMT. It's not, it's not meth. It's DMT. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. And then I saw the yellow crystal, and I'm like, oh, okay. So he did a nice little scoop in there and rolled it and basically told me to lay down. After I hit it, like, take a huge-ass hit of it and hold it in as long as possible. And then when I exhale, lay down. I was like, all right. So I did. You know? Usually I take three really big hits and hold them in and then lay down. But he said, just take one. He was using a fucking torch lighter. So I did. And, um, well, I did exactly what he said. And all the people with him that were camping just went completely quiet. Because they were taking turns doing it. And, um, Yeah. <laughs> I forgot all sense of what I was. I'm detached from everything that I am and pretty much transcended space and time. I was speaking with these little beings in binarial language, I'd like to say. It was like a telepathic binarial language. And I was seeing these colors from these beings. And they weren't telling me don't give into astonishment like you hear from people. They were actually telling me that I can be the astonishment. Which I figured out afterwards what they were referring. You know, learn to love myself. Treat others how you want to treat me. Basic shit. But, um, you know, I had this really detailed conversation about the workings of the universe and multiverse and all this other shit. And I completely forgot, like, 90% of it. <laughs> but I gotta say, it was pretty fucking intense. Because um, after I came out of it. I was speaking in some weird... I was going... To, I didn't even notice I was doing that. And they said I was doing that the whole time while I was laying down. Just... Like, oh. And I was like... I just remember I was communicating with these beings... In this binarial language or something. I don't remember most of it. But... That was my uh, most significant experience with DMT. Um, another time... Another time, well, I don't like to, Another time I saw my friends, you know, fake. I don't like talking about that one, but this was before a good friend of mine died. Uh, about a year ago. From an overdose of fentanyl. The thing is, the kid never really fucked with fentanyl. He never really touched it. He wasn't, didn't play with those drugs like that. Or at least I thought. But, um, yeah, I had this other DMT trip where I clearly saw him laid out in a coffin dead. And it was specifically his face. And I came out of it fucking bawling. And then the weird part is his face became my face. Uh, and I just kept seeing visions of coffins. I don't like talking about that trip much, but I should. Because DMT showed me something, you know, like... Stay away from that shit. <laughs> 
was, you know, I was pretty bad on that for a while, and I got about four and a half years clean from needles and all them drugs, like fentanyl and heroin and shit. Like I said, I never fucked with meth, but fentanyl and heroin, yeah, and I got almost five years, almost, 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 and, um, I just fuck with Kratom here and there. I keep it with me, you know, just know I have it, but I barely touch it, but, um, What's that big that I think about that? Um, that? That really motivated me to stop doing that shit. Was that DMT trip? That motivated me completely to be like, yo, I don't want to end up dying yet. I don't want to fucking die. And I came out of that bawling, fucking crying. And, you know, I tried to get a hold of my homie and make sure he was all right, still alive. And he's just like, what the fuck, man? I'm like, yeah, don't, don't do that shit, man. He's like, I don't do that shit. And then, like, you know, less than a year later, he died. I'm rambling on, but, you know, that, that's the thing, like, DMT is a really intense teacher, like, it will teach you things beyond yourself, obviously, it will, I don't think it kills your ego, it numbs it completely, and you learn things that you can't comprehend, <laughs> or, I don't know about seeing in the future, I mean, I think time is an illusion anyways, right? I mean, like, shit like LSD can make you connect with other people. And, yes, I think it's possible to have telepathic communication with others. I think it's possible. Well, it's not too far-fetched. Or have some type of connection or connect deeper with other people. Well, mushrooms is more of, like, inner working of the self. Like, you could look at yourself in a third person and, you know, analyze little issues with yourself and heal yourself. But DMT... DMT is you're talking to the creators of this universe, or they appear as, or just other beings, or maybe extensions of yourself. I haven't quite figured out what the fuck it was, but, you know, y'all call it, they call them machine elves. I guess that's what you could call them. They didn't have really a, uh, an apparitional form, they were just lights. They were just lights and making venereal sound, and I was communicating and understood everything they said to me. They were the ones that told me I am the astonishment. And I realized later on that I was also telling myself that, you know, I should learn to love myself. Because I was pretty mean to myself. So that's what I interpreted it as, you know. And it's definitely not something to be thrown up against the wall and abused. And the times that I have done it, were sparse, I mean, the the shortest amount of time between one use and the other was about a month, <laughs> and it was all free, I didn't pay, I never paid for DMT, it just found me, and the last time I did it was about four years ago, when I had that fucked up, and I just never I quit, I quit the fight all, I quit all that shit, and um, I still have sciatic pain, so I take Kratom for that every now and again when it comes up, but um, Kratom helped me quit it too, like the physical part when I was withdrawing. I puked a lot. It sucked, but it motivated the DMT motivated me to not touch it again. And I haven't. And, you know, every time I get that mental craving every now and again, I'll just take some Kratom. Same thing with the pain. And I always keep it with me just to know it's like a security thing. I mean, this bottle's probably been full for like almost a month now, I should pour it out at some point, because it's probably fermenting, <laughs> you know, but um, that's all I wanted to say, that was just my experience with DMT, and um, I would say respect it, because it could definitely respect you, and um, don't look at it like a drug, don't do it at a party, don't do it at anything like that, it's set and setting, do it at a place, if you're around people, make sure there are people that you literally trust with your life, all the way in your subconscious, that you, like, you love and trust because who knows what your mind would do and um i would also say um make sure it's a very safe environment where you don't feel any bit of you're familiar with the environment or you feel safe and it's relaxed and it's quiet like a environment one would sleep in or meditate that, that's what i would recommend doing it at and you know don't think of it like a drug it's not a party drug it helps you that's all I gotta say. Peace, love, and slack action, y'all.